Hello, everybody, and welcome to my session through my browser. So let's go to kind of the presentation. So my name is Sherry List, and I'm working as Azure Developer Engagement Lead at Microsoft, which means that I am the connection between Microsoft and the developer communities. I'm based in Copenhagen, Denmark, and um, apart from my daily work, I am um, the chairwoman of an association which is called uh, Hack Your Future, the Copenhagen chapter, uh, where we help people from the disadvantaged group with zero or limited access to the education uh, to go through an intensive seven months course to learn all the skills they need in order to join uh, the job market as web developer. And of course, we also help them later on uh, as much as we can in order to get an internship or uh, a full time job for them. I'm also a um, co-founder and organizer of uh, some communities and some conferences such as NG Vikings, NG Spain, and NG Copenhagen. Yeah, you realize it right. I really love Angular and my demo is also in Angular. And one of the new initiatives that I'm part of it, it is called DevShop which is a, a weekly, uh, like an online meetup, which on each week we go and have a deep dive in a specific topic. And in order to contact me, the best way is that uh, through Twitter. And my DM is always open. Okay, enough about me. Uh, let's go to uh, find out that what we are going to do today. So I want you all, to try actually uh, this demo that I prepared there um, via that um, link if you're on the browser uh, or if you are on your mobile, you can scan that uh, QR code to have the demo. One thing though, I realized a bug and it doesn't work on my iPhone actually. So it only works properly on an Android or any of the web browsers. So, Let's try that demo. If you scan, if you go to that link, uh, bit.ly slash move that analyzer, uh, you can see my demo. And, and I also want to see some tweets from you uh, with the result of your emotion, uh, because it, my demo is going to translate your emotion into an emoji. And uh, if you post it on, uh, on Twitter with the conference hashtag, later on, I can also give you a digital swag as well uh, to kind of that to the funniest one. But how the demo works uh, is like here uh, that uh, what you can do is that you can kind of that you can say that, yeah, say cheese and be happy. And you see, it translated to an emoji and draw it on my face. And if you're, for example, sad or tired, let's see. If Oh, okay, I'm very sad. I was not expected to be that sad. But yeah, this is going to be um, the, the demo that I created and we are going to create this demo step by step to, together to see that how easy it is to uh, to actually to use the different technologies to create this demo. So if we go back to the presentation is, um, so we saw the demo. Uh, and of course, I have everything on GitHub, and you can see the source code later on. But let's see that how I created this. Uh, this. Uh, before we start, um, I want to have a very quick overview of uh, what AI is, what ML is, and, and so on. So it's going to be very quick, but I want everybody to be on the same page. If you go through the um, kind of that, uh, if you if you try to to search for the definition of AI or artificial intelligence, one of the the best definition that you get is AI is a simulation of human intelligence processes by machines. These processes include reasoning, remembering, learning, and self-correction. 
which means that basically we want machines uh, to behave like humans, like us, that we learn different skills and then uh, we, we remember those skills and then we use those skills in the, in the time that is needed. So we want the machines to behave like that. As for machine learning, in 1959, Arthur Samuel uh, says that machine learning is a field of computer science that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So we want to give this ability uh, to the machines without exactly in each condition tell them that what to do. Imagine if uh, that you can't write programs that is contains all the if then else. It should be in different way. For example, if you look at this picture, um, I mean, I can say that there is a dog and there is a cat looking at each other through a window. Uh, I can recognize this dog and cat without I personally met them before, but because I met similar dogs and cat before I can detect them. So imagine if you wanted to write if then else, how many of, uh, I mean, how your logic is going to be. Uh, that's why that we need to use different techniques uh, in uh, writing our programs. And there are some of the well-known ones are, I listed them here, like artificial neural network, I like that simulating the way that the brain works, deep learning by going through the different layers uh, of um, analysis and, and so on. And one thing though, that um, not in, uh, you, should, you should remember that in different cases, you might need to combine some of these different techniques together. Uh, so it can it can be slightly more complex than you just say that yeah I want to use deep learning to solve this issue. It might be more difficult than that. So in a big picture, so artificial intelligence is the whole giving ability of machines to be like human, and we apply that by rough writing softwares uh, that use one or multiple of these different techniques. Now that we have the whole big picture, let's find out how actually machine learning works. Imagine I have a um, set of data that I, what I want to do is that I want to teach machine to detect a dog. So, so I have a set of data contains a pattern, which in my case is a dog. Then I need to go through multiple type of analysis uh, by, I mean, use one or combination of this algorithm to find out how a dog look like, find a pattern in this pattern. And the result of that, it is called a model. So a model can recognize in this case, how a dog look like. You might have heard people are saying that I am training my model. So it means that they go through the process over and over again in order to have a result, which is a model. Once we have that model, then we can have an application to talk to this model. So this is the whole flow. And of course, it's not always so rosy and easy. There are challenges. And uh, in this case, one of the challenges is that um, it's not so easy to find a data set which contains the whole scenarios, the whole all type of patterns, including edge cases. And in my case, was that it is not so easy to find a kind of that picture of all the dogs, including the cross dogs, and including the dogs that they might look like a cat. Uh, yes, they do exist. I have one of them. And so this is challenging. And imagine that not all scenarios are as easy as only detecting a dog. So finding a data set which reflect the whole reality, it is not always easy. The other thing is that create and testing algorithm, the result of algorithm is also neither that easy. And uh, for example, um, I want to kind of show you this picture. 
that when I look at this, even human brain, um, it's not so easy to find out which one is Shifafa or which one is a morphine. So testing this result is always not so easy. And finding which algorithm or combination of that to use in each scenario it can be confusing. Yes, we have data scientists but, uh, to, to, to work on that, but, but it's not an easy job, always. And the last word that we all know that exposing a model to the app, having a kind of a, um, an API call to the model, it, it can be challenging to, find, to have a secure API and, and also to make sure that um, it performs well when we have a high traffic, uh, we want to have a more power so it is performant. So that also can be challenging in different scenarios. So, is there a better way or it's easier to say that is there an easier way to do that? One other way is that actually at, at Microsoft, we have, um, uh, we have Azure Cognitive Services, which is um, kind of one of our services that contain multiple different services that it can be handy in these scenarios. So if you go back to this kind of that, to this picture, you can say that it takes care of everything here that we just say. So it's taking care of the, the kind of that creating the model for you and then exposing it to the outside world. So all we need to do, especially as a front end developer, to just call a REST APR to talk to these services. And you can say that cognitive services is machine learning as a service. And it sits on Azure, so it helps us to to make sure that our, our kind of our model is secure. We have a perform uh, kind of a performance of our API is is good because it can scale up and scale down based on the scenario. So we don't need to be worried about the security or about being a kind of that uh, scaling up or scaling down our GPU power and CPU power. So. So that is uh, kind of that the easier way to do it. And it comes out of the box with five different types of services. Uh, and, and under each of these categories, of course, there are more services. And we are not going through all of that because it's going to uh, take forever. <laughs> there are a lot of services coming every day. So we are focusing on vision because that's what I used in my demo as well. Under the vision, we have one which is called computer vision. So the way that computer vision works is that if you have, for example, this picture, it can say that it can detect our foreman standing there. It can detect that there is a sky. And so, and all the results come with a probability of zero and one. When you say that zero, it means that I literally don't know what I'm talking about. But it's, when it says that one, it means that it totally could detect an object. The other one is video indexer that it does that through the video. So it detects different objects in the video. You might have seen a video that went viral some, I guess, half a year ago or something on Twitter. That was a guy with a violin that going from the room to room, then it could detect all the objects uh, in the background. So that's what video indexer can actually do for you. And face is uh, what I use as well. So it can recognize the face, it can detect different emotions, it can detect that it's a male or it's a female, they can guess the age, and we're going to have a deep dive on that later on. And ink recognizer, uh, what it does is, is recognize when you sketch something, it can recognize objects, it can uh, recognize the handwritings, um, and uh, that's actually you can do a lot of interesting things with that ink recognizer as well. And the other one is form recognizer, which when you scan a form, it returns you like a key value of everything which is there, which can come handy in many scenarios. Um, we know that how difficult this process is for. And a uh, custom vision um, is that, for example, you can tell, if you send this picture, you can tell that these are not, not for men standing there. These are stormtroopers. So I can teach it to recognize different things. Or for example, it was a, a 
one project that um, people, um, somebody was using this um, kind of service and then it found out that it doesn't recognize PRAM. So it could easily in few steps teach it that this is a PRAM so it could just recognize it later on for you. And um, I have to add here that one thing is that I told you that cognitive services, it comes out of um, the box with some models but you can always customize those models to to kind of that to handle the more advanced scenario because the scenarios is not always like that this is a dog this is a cat uh, you can always also train it to go to more advanced scenarios okay so once we have it so how to how actually how to use it it's so easy the first step is that you need to go to your Azure portal to create the service that you need. Once you create it, you will find out that if you want to customize your model for more advanced scenarios, you can, you can do that or you can skip that. For example, to recognizing a dog or recognizing a face, you don't need to go any advanced one. And then you just call the REST API from your app, just like that your front end is talking to any type of backend. And it returns you JSONs. And you parse that JSON and then use it in your project. Okay, so if it was that easy, let's do it. Just like when you want to use any backend, you have to kind of that find out that what are the possibilities there. That's why that you need to find out that what face API it, it can do it for you. And there is a, I put the link of here to, to go through the kind of face API to see that what are the options there. But one of the thing that it returns you is the position of the face. And, uh, and also I want to emphasize that, that there might be more than one face in my, more than one face in each picture and it can recognize all of them and it can return you the position of the face. And, uh, when you see here, it also gives you the confidence. So it's a 0 0.7, so it's a confidence is pretty high. And then it, in this case, it could also say that these two faces belong to the same person. So we can train that this is the face A, so it can always recognize it for you. And uh, you need to, of course, to create the, uh, create an account in the in the kind of in, in Azure as well. Uh, and Our a credit card, and you can you can uh, experiment it as much as you want to. Once you create that account, um, um, and then create your face service there, it gives you these are the two things that, that you need: your endpoint and your API key. That's all you need to talk to the cognitive services. And um, of course, you can um, you can just try to play around with Postman to see that uh, to find the right kind of that to uh, to tune up the the call to your API in the way that you need, and then you bring it bring it there. So in my case, what I'm going to do is that using the tech function on the face API, and everything uh, you can just go and see that everything that you you need to do. Uh, so I call the detect function and then it, it needs some parameter. One of the, I listed only a few of them here. Um, for example, return face landmark. This is an interesting one. If you're standing, for example, in front of Eiffel Tower and then you take a picture of yourself, it can detect the Eiffel Tower behind you as well. It's a Boolean, you can turn it on and off, but it can detect some well-known landmark for you. And then uh, the face attribute, you can say that it has age, gender, smile, glasses, emotion, facial hair, and so on. So these are the ones that as if you include it in um, uh, under the face attribute, that it will return this one for you. And as for the header, of course, you need to have your API key here, and then the content type. It accepts Octodus stream or JSON. What's the difference? If you are posting a picture, right to the 
uh, cognitive services, you need to specify that is an octet stream and it only accepts the files in the binary format. Otherwise, you can only send an a, uh, a URL there. If you use the uh, say that is the JSON, then you can just send a URL. So it's JSON that you say that URL and column and the URL of your picture. In my case, I'm sending the picture right away to the cognitive services. And it returns you something like this. You see, it returns you always a position of the face and uh, kind of that this is a part that I'm interested in, emotion. And this was an absolute happiness picture that I sent it there. Otherwise, it will come with uh, multiple different values here. That's what you need to use that one to translate it to the emoji. OK, now that we know how our back end works, let's see that how actually we can create this card. You remember in my application, it was like a um, live video camera there. There was a button and then the result. So this is an Angular app that I created. Of course, you can just use it anything that you want or no framework or anything. Um, and in my Angular app, I created a camera component. And in the HTML there, I use the native video element here to have the live feed from my webcam. And then I have this button to click to run capture uh, method. And then I have the canvas here, which I draw the results there. So one thing is that in my component, um, when in the, from, the, from the JavaScript, when I want to have a reference access to the element, I need to use the view child. And I did two of that instances, one to have access to my video, and then the other one to, ha to have access to my canvas. And then I specify some configuration here for my video. One is that the facing mode and then the width and height. About the facing mode, I use user because if you use in your mobile, of course, in in this case, in only in the Android one, that um, it used the front camera. Otherwise, by default, it used the, the back camera. And then I needed to use the render to uh, um, service in, in Angular in order to kind of that to save, be able to safely set values to my native elements. You will see later on what I mean. And then I started on NG on it. I started my camera. So let's see that what start camera function does. In a start camera, the first thing is that I um, I need to have access to um, from the browser to a user's video. Uh, and user have to allow it, and that's the that's what it does. So I get the permission in case that it was granted. I set the constraint that I pass here the configuration to the um, to the media, uh, and then I uh, once it's kind of that uh, I want to bond it to the element. I attach the video. Otherwise, it said that sorry, the camera was not available because either it was not actually there or the user didn't grant the function, the, the kind of that grant the permission, sorry. OK, so let's see that how does attach video works. This is, uh, this is the part that we need the render function, as I told you. So in attach video, we have the stream of uh, kind of coming from the, uh, the video. And, and then we pass it to the native element. And, and then in this way, have like this view that in the kind of that in a live way. So the streams com coming through there, then we have it there. That's good. So we could successfully have this live view of a camera here. It's not only there because it's kind of that it constantly coming there. We need to uh, we need to update it, and then it might also the width and height might change. 
So we need to set it there and we should capture it. In, in my case, I captured it in, in, in these two uh, kind of that um, and constant here because I, we need to later on to draw it again on our canvas. So after here, we have it. We make sure that the, the, con the, the, the stream constantly coming there and we need to take the selfie. Once we click that button, it runs the capture method. What we do here is that we use the render function again. And I told you that I keep this with an high. And what I do is that I now set the canvas width and height um, with the width and height of the video that I got. And we need to draw it now. That's very easy. Canvas all already has a draw image function uh, method. Uh, where what we say here is say that whatever is on that second is a video element, just draw it into the canvas. And since it's a picture, so it's like a 2D. And it just draw it for us. It's just that easy. And now we need to do some extra stuff. Because remember, we need to talk to the cognitive services and cognitive services accepts file. So the first is that whatever that is in a canvas, we need to convert it to an image, which already has the kind of the functionality there. So I, I create this image and you remember, I told you that it needs to be like a, a blog. And I use a very normal service that you can, I'm pretty sure all of you know that, how to convert the PNG to the binary. So I did that. I'm not going to invest time to, to kind of go through that. It's in my source code, you can see. So I converted it to there. And now we need to kind of that detect the emotions with that file. What we do here, we are passing the, the file here. We need to set the headers and we need to set the headers in the HTTP as well. And then we need to post it. We need to post the file that we have, which is already in a binary. We set the headers and everything. And this is the API um, endpoint that Cognitive Services give it to us. So we post it there and it returns off an object that you see that actually that um, actually, an array of objects. You saw you saw that in Postman that what we got. So this is the part that I use in order to use the to kind of that to to translate it to the emotions. I get this result from the cognitive services and I pass it to a. a so I'm going to show it to you later uh, in the in the in my code. that you send all of this emotion and that in translate it to an emoji that um, I will show it to you later. So, but in this in this service, what I do is that I send those faces and it manipulate my, my, my array and add those emoji there. And then all we need to do is that draw it on the picture. So let's see that how we can draw it. We need to have access to our canvas. Once we have that, uh, as I told you that there might be more than one face in the camera, I needed to do a little bit of a calculation here because the emoji that we get is just uh, a font. And, and then, um, sorry, it's a, it's a character. And we need to just write it into the face. Uh, and in order to find the right size, because if your face is closer to the camera, that font size needs to be bigger. When you go a bit farther, it needs to be a smaller. So I need to do this calculation to find the right font size for it. And uh, once you have the font size, then all you need to do is that you just say that, okay, go to canvas, 
this is the emoji that I have, and this is the kind of that the position that that you want, and just write it. And that's how it actually it works. So let's go back um, again to the to the demo that I have it here. So you you see. Um, you see, um, this is what I'm talking about. When I'm closer, so I try to be like this. Okay, I, I was not so happy. Uh, when I go a bit farther and I try to be maybe so. Okay, I wonder. <laughs> so, so, so this is what I'm uh, I'm telling you. And then of course the position is uh, I need to work a little a bit better to find, uh, adjust it to be totally center, but uh, this is all it um, it needs. So let me go back here. I have the I have the service here that I told you that it find that uh, there was there are some absolute ones just like uh, contempt, happy, and and fear. So these are kind of that the the, the absolute one. You can be angry, and you can yeah you can even be poo. <laughs> So these are the ones that it, it gets it, and then it go and find that that what is the closest one to um, to to this. Then it it returns the emoji uh, to you. So let's try to see that if I can be angry. No, it was <laughs> it was not angry. So I was crying. But but you get the point. Um, and uh, that's how it works. And it's pretty. Simple. So if we kind of that quickly go back here because I'm I'm, I'm almost done with everything. Um, what I what actually I showed you here it was a very simple, um, very simple um, example of what you can do with the cognitive services. You can do way more, and there are a lot of really impactful um, and and more interesting projects out there that they use the same technology. I want you all to, to go to the AI.lab where you can see the different projects that the people they made with this um, with kind of that uh, with this technology. One of them, my I listed two of them that I found it uh, very interesting. One is that Snow Leopard uh, Trust, which use a uh, machine learning and co cognitive services to detect uh, the behavior of the snow leopard because they are endangered animal. And a snow leopards also like humans that we have the identical uh, like the fingerprint. So these are the they have the the patterns and and that they have they are identical so they can count them and track their behavior. The other one which is uh, slightly more fun um, um, is that you can kind of that have the picture of um, have like a snippet from uh, from internet. It can detect a person if it was like a well-known person, and it can also uh, give you some tips and information. Similar t-shirts even. So um, sky is your limit. I really hope that I inspired you to to come up with a with a nice project with using these technologies. And please let me know if you're working on an interesting project with, with that. I'm really interested to to hear that. And um, as a thank you to um, to watching my presentation and learning more about Azure Cognitive Services, I want to give you all uh, this uh, like a digital uh, badge that we have, which is be which belongs to Azure Heroes uh, program, which we created at Microsoft, and you can look at it as a token of appreciation for you all that you are learning about our technology. Your using our technology and uh, you are creating communities around it and making sure that the community is inclusive. So you can all scan this QR code. If you never had the, the Azure Heroes badge before, you need to download an app which is called Engine because this badge is based on public blockchain and Ethereum and you need to store it in, in your digital wallet. Uh, and then uh, once you have it, you can actually go and learn more about the program because these are learner is one of the badges that you can get, but you can get more badges based on the different criteria, which is listed there. Or you can, if you know some person that deserve a badge, you can actually give a badge to the person as well, nominate the person. 
and um, hope you like my presentation and my uh, my uh, slides are, are online there are multiple resources that I listed there and also some supporting uh, slides there uh, so yes uh, if there is any any question, I am happy to answer them. Thank you very much. It was a very fun uh, and entertaining demo. And I definitely tried it out and tweeted about it. And <laughs> yep, unfortunately, uh, I don't think we have any questions right now. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed the session. and. <laughs> Thank and you. Uh, I saw that you have another, you're hosting another event just off the right. It's Angular Copenhagen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, in, in, in about an hour, we are hosting an Angular Copenhagen meetup. <laughs> uh, all the best for that, too. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Bye-bye.